Welcome to Modern Marketing Messages. In this episode, we're presenting to you a webinar session that was presented live during this year's AmericanEagle.com Customer Forum. This forum is a special event exclusively for existing AmericanEagle.com clients looking to learn about the latest web trends, digital marketing, and tips and tricks to improve their overall digital presence. In this episode, we will learn about Beyond the Rankings, the interplay of SEO and brand growth, presented by two of our SEO team leads, Kevin Williams and Matt Kirtley. We hope you learned some valuable insights from their presentation. We now present to you, Matt and Kevin. All right, well, uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, very excited to be uh, working with you and learning with you. It's always very nice um, when we're able to take a minute and um, you know connect with people and in a more educational environment and talk about some of the things we're passionate about um, and so today uh, I'm here with Matt Kirtley and we're gonna get started on looking at beyond rankings the interplay of SEO and brand growth yeah. um, so I'm Kevin Williams I'm SEO team lead and actually, Matt Kirtley, it says senior technical SEO here, but actually, uh, Matt just was promoted yeah. to be an SEO team lead as well. Okay, over <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there we go. Uh, good job. Yep. I've been I've been doing SEO about 19 years. I started at Back to Bed and the Betting Experts, which was the Chicagoland mattress retail company. Uh, we grew those, grew those stores from about 10 stores to about 350 stores before we sold that to Mattress Firm. Uh, the first day I started, I, worked, I started as a billing specialist there in accounting and uh, fell asleep my first day. I got the boss's name wrong uh, and then spent 10 years there, uh, mostly in marketing. Obviously, billing wasn't uh, the most exciting uh, role for me at that point, but I got $500 on Google Ads, uh, and we launched a website with AmericanEagle.com in 2007. Uh, grew to that website to more than uh, 3 million visits a month, and uh, was able to have a lot of success there. Moved on to a lot of different companies, eventually finding myself back at AmericanEagle.com to help lead this SEO department. I'm joined with Matt Kirtley. Yeah, I also started SEO about 20 years ago. It was my first job out of high school, actually. I, my dad knew a guy at his company that did it. And so I got a little internship. And so I've done SEO and then onwards to all kinds of digital marketing, every kind of digital marketing from then, but always with SEO as the base of it. And so it's been real fun to like start there. And now I'm, my mic's not on, Randy's telling me. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> okay. The um, so SEO has always been a part of it, but I've had the good fortune to get into email, into paid ads, into social media, social media, crowdfunding, podcast, video, and but knowing the SEO base of it, of how the two play together, and how SEO has changed over the years. You used to be able to, like when I started, you could just go to Alta Vista and submit your link, and it would recrawl it immediately and re-rank you immediately. <laughs> so you could just like play the game of like getting to the top of the page on the same day. Uh, you can't do that anymore, unfortunately, but to go from where it is was then to where it is now has been really exciting. So yeah, we wanted to talk to you today. Just very briefly, we'll run through uh, building on the basics, how to Google ranks web pages, and then get right into the heart of, of this presentation, uh, which is uh, branding businesses and using SEO and how that kind of interplays with different departments, different uh, aspects of different companies, such as customer service or social mm -hmm. media, and how that kind of plays a vital role into the promotion of your company. Yeah, the thing I re we Oops. really want you to get out of this is to go beyond just thinking of like uh, SEOs when you come and you throw some keywords at a page after you've done everything else you want to do, to really thinking about how does SEO interact with all the other things you're hopefully already doing, or where can you really improve both like the other efforts and the SEO efforts and how they work together. So this first quote is for is the one I threw on here. So get the phone metals down and the level of everything you do will rise. So you can never get away from these basics. You're gonna have to make sure you're doing these right, but it's gonna be doing those basics at a high level or applying them in a way that's unique to your situation is how you get advanced. It's not like there's a whole new set of crazy things to do, it's just, are you executing these things at a higher level? And then SEO is a combination of art and science wherein the primary objective is to build trust 
And trust really is the key factor here that we're discussing for the most part and focused on in this presentation. Um, and then a mentor of mine, Dean Kanabi, uh, the sales director for Back to Bed, always sell the story. So um, at Betting Experts, at Betting Back to Bed, what we had developed was um, a reputation management program that was really a, a bit ahead of its time to a certain extent. And we, we were always trying to sell um, the concept that we had great service. And so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but let's build on the basics. So basically, um, what is SEO? SEO refers to holistic website marketing in an effort to increase search engine ranking positions and digital presence through a combination of on-page and off-page tactics, right? And so um, when we go through the foundational aspects of SEO, it's associated with how well you index, what's your crawlability of your site, what's the structure of your site, right? Um, so um, today we're assuming that your site is technically sound, your site gets crawled and ex indexed effectively, that your pages and core content about your products and services are well developed and that you know, you can make content updates, pages, post articles. But if you can't, <laughs> let's let's talk and, and do a, a foundational assessment of your website, yeah. which is usually pretty fast for us. How Google ranks web pages. So what we have up here are what we consider the four main factors that Google's gonna be looking at for when it's determining how to rank a page. We're gonna get into each of these, and there's certainly a million more you could add, but these are the ones we think if you're gonna focus on something you're gonna get your best return on your effort by looking at these. And this first one actually goes back to one of Google's first patents. So PageRank is how Google looks at the relationship between the interlinking of pages. And you might hear it described as, this is how Google determines like who's voting for you. Like if some high authority people link to you, to Google, that's a sign you're worth looking at. And in the past, you could actually know your PageRank score. There used to be a little plugin for Internet Explorer. You could go to your site and look, and it would tell you zero to 10, what's your page rank? We used to sort, so nice. use Yahoo uh, Site Explorer yeah. with a, pl a special plugin and just sort all of our competitors' backlinks by what their page rank was, and then go back and try to re reenact that backlink, right? We don't have as good of tools or visibility into PageRank, but we do know that it's just hugely impactful, right? And that backlinks uh, and effective uh, relevancy as well as backlinks and mm -hmm. the authority of that site are, are just hugely important and really uh, a primary ranking factor in the basis of Google's algorithm. One thing I want to say about too is it seems like a very technical thing about like network, like figuring out the connection between all these pages, but at its core, it's a trust thing. They're trying to understand, do other people trust mm. you enough to link to you? And so there's certain web pages that build trust more than others. For example, Better Business Bureau is a great trust building web page that get a backlink or your Google business listing <laughs> or Bing Places, Apple Maps, MapQuest, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to put yourself out there, right? A lot of businesses, what we see is that they just are a little bit too scared to put themselves out there, put their information out there and get those links and get those brand mentions. Uh, you really should have your boilerplate, you know, what is my company? What are my benefits? What are my differentiators? So that you can just very quickly uh, write a description on Yelp, write a description on superpages.com, fill in all of your details because uh, all of the details and the information is being uh, understood. Google doesn't look at your web page and just think it's just one web page. It thinks it's a network of interconnected web pages and websites that really work off of one another and they use all of that interconnectivity to understand your web page, right? And so these trust factors are just hugely important and are becoming much, much more important with the advent of AI technology and the quick, quick development of websites. Yeah. A, a lot of spam and, and bot network issues that are occurring lately. What, what, we're, what we're seeing is that these trust factors are just way more important than they used to be for ranking. And they always were really important. We can see if you launch a new business and you establish accurate name, address, and phone, and you distribute that with business listings with Yext or another listing service, and you put yourself out there, you will immediately show up on Google. If you don't do those things, you're not gonna show up. And so it very much is, um, you know, a trust. You gotta reach that level. But then in beyond that, right, if you 
hit all of these things and you develop your website to a point where you have consumer transparency and you have uh, you know, clarity and, and you have so many trust factors, then that just allows you to rank better overall before you even develop content, right? Yeah, I'm gonna keep button in here. If you ever wanna look at something interesting, there is a document that Google uses to train their human reviewers, which you might not know they have. The reviewers don't affect the ranking of any one site, but they're used to for, by Google to see, are we ranking good pages? And so they have these guidelines that give the reviewers for when they look at a site, how trustworthy does a site seem? And that comes down to things like, can they, is it easy to contact them? Do they have customer service policies? Do they have support documentation? And so those aren't directly ranking factors, but this is the kind of feedback that Google then uses to improve its algorithms. So we know that these really matter to them. And if you go to the upper left-hand corner of your website and you click the little, uh, next to the SSL certificate lock, you can click on that and you can see how Google references the trust factors associated with your website. This is and, new. It, and if it's not there, it'll tell you, are you sure this website is trustworthy? We're not sure, right? And and so that is actually present now and, and viewable. Um, obviously relevant content, right? So mm -hmm. content that offers yeah. value to the readers that's not just, uh, not just, you know, knee deep, it's actually fulfilling the entire reasons why any user would search for that, right? So it's not just um, content that is long, it's content that resolves the problems that someone is searching for. And if it's a broader topic, let's say uh, Chicago Bulls, right? There are many aspects of that that you need to cover in order to rank well. So let's say you need to rank well for Chicago Bulls, you would have to cover stats, team, jerseys, games, championships, all of these things for your Chicago Bulls blog uh, uh, to come up, right? And so the broader the topic, the more detailed and more intent, right, behind the search that you need to fulfill with that content. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, what Google really is rewarding is comprehensive original content that is fulfilling the reason why the people are looking for it more so. And it's not as much about let's get these keywords on this page in this order in this way. It's more so like, like is this solving my problems, right? Mm -hmm. And this last one is uh, natural language processing. This is a form of AI. So Google's been doing AI forever. I know AI blew up this year because of things like chatbots and ChatGPT. But if you're, we're just talking about AI being computer systems that can do a bunch of computations and understand a lot of topics. They have all these things that have, they've been using for years. Like you see these names here, Rank Brain and Neural Matching and BERT. I'll actually be talking about those tomorrow more. But this is how Google's going into the text of your site and trying to extract out what's, what do these things really mean? Is there a topic here that is not necessarily, like when you do a search that doesn't use the keyword, like you don't even know what you're looking for, how does Google match that up to a page where you like, you look up, uh, what's, what do you call the top consumer in a, a food chain? Like if it just looked for those words on a page, it might not find the answer for you, but it, it's able to analyze what the meaning of pages are and then go, well, the person's really looking for apex predator but they just don't know what to call it. So they have all these systems now that are trying to go through your content and extract out the intention of your, like how to pair it up with the intention of the user. And it can be, because also realize Google is getting searches all day, every day that it's never seen before. And they're not simple little keywords. It's people are typing in new searches all the time. So they have to figure out how do I take what I've indexed and answer this person's question. So it's a very deep topic, but it's just understanding that your content needs to appeal to both the humans, good content, the last slide, and it needs to be written in a way that these systems can understand, can parse out the meaning and give it back to the humans. So a lot of times the way that we kind of deploy that would be to add in entity terms or terms that are related to uh, the keyword. So for example, CMS related to a website platform like BigCommerce or something like that, or e-commerce associated with BigCommerce, right? 
And so there's a variety of words that it's looking for. And Google's not actually reading the content. It, you can trick Google with lorem ipsum content and plugging in <laughs> specific variations of keywords and rank the page. It is looking for an analysis of these different words that it expects to be there and understands are related to one another to be able to analyze the content. Mm -hmm. All right, so finally, <laughs> we're here at the heart of the, the presentation. Um, so I spent about five years taking customer service phone calls um, as the backup, right? And so I worked alongside our director of customer service. I worked in our, um, our call center as well and I did a lot of the chat service. And so customer service is very much uh, something that, uh, you know, was a heart, a, a big, huge part, and, and just a core part of Back to Bed Betting Experts and the first company that I helped develop. And that was something that we just constantly sold over and over and over again. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit today, integrating customer service, reput reputation, and SEO. So central to brand's online presence uh, customer service impacts SEO performance by shaping a business's reputation. While reputation management focuses on optimizing positive content and mi mitigating negative content, comprehensive customer service ensures that you, you know, genuine user satisfaction, trust, and loyalty. And this is what great brand stories are really made of, right? So um, if you think about a customer, that customer can be multiple customers, right? A single customer is a multiple opportunities to earn additional business. And I want to tell you about systemic thankfulness and genuine care in service and give you an example of that from, from my past experience. So there's the five thank you models, right? And so when someone came into our store, what did we do? We thanked them for coming into their store, right? When we sold them a mattress, what did we do? We thanked them. And this was, they, we were trained to do this. Everybody had to do it right? Um, th we thank them for earning their business and the sale before they get their delivery, right? What did we do? We called them up. Are you sure that your delivery time is good? All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for, you know, shopping with us. We really, really appreciate it. We, the customer gets delivery, the driver thanks them for the business and gives them a special thank you card, right? Post transaction, after the delivery, the salesperson calls and says, hey, how did your delivery go? That's awesome, thank you so much for your business. Right after that, district manager, they call, they say, you know, I'm just checking in, making sure that everything went with well with your purchase experience. You know, how did it go? That's wonderful, thank you so much. That, at that point in time, that person then says, you know, can I, can I, can I ask for a Google review from you? You know, that person then uh, is like, heck yeah, let's do it, right? Um, at every point and every connection, right, we were thanking the customer and we're, and we're reminding them, you know, can, can you, can you uh, tell a friend, right? Can you, can you write a Google review, right? And then throughout that entire process, we also, besides the manual process, we had an automated process, right? And so every customer would get an automated email and they would uh, reach out to us and we would say, you know, thank you so much. Like, can you provide us a Google review? Or can you provide us a, a review on our website, right? And what does that do? That generates user-generated content automatically for your website that is specific to the products, right? It, it generates buzz. It generates off-site content. It generates a stronger backlink, right? It generates um, that referral, right? It builds value with the customer. It builds loyalty with the customer, right? And so uh, the other thing we did was we had a mantra at sales meetings, right? You know, who's got the most reviews this month, right? We, we spiffed it. We, we paid our salespeople to get reviews, <laughs> right? We, we made them earn it. And what happened was that um, every day, people would come into our stores and ask for that salesperson, right? They would say, Kip, I, I heard about you on Yelp. You know, you're my guy, right? And that is a way easier close, okay? The, the, the idea of, of a closing a cold person walking into a store versus someone asking for you by name, right? So now apply that and think about that and think about 
how your customers and what's their mode and mindset and how do they look at your business, right? And how can you build that kind of thankfulness or customer service into your messaging, into your company culture, and into your brand image, right? And, and so that's the type of thing that greatly increases conversion rate, right? Greatly increases BBACs, greatly increases uh, that kind of earned extra business, right? This also greatly improves how many phone calls you get. For every new review on Google, we got two extra phone calls every single month. Uh, and so it directly influences not only the offsite performance, but your online performance. Um, and what I would say is, in general, you do want to you do want to focus on Google. You want to focus on first party reviews for your own website and user generated for your own website. And then there's some other ones, Yelp, <coughs> Trip, Trust, uh, Trip Advisor are both very very popular. But you want to get like one or two reviews on these other sites too, because a lot of times these sites rank the first page of their results based upon reviews and barely anybody has reviews on yellowpages.com or city search or other things like this and that again adds more value to these backlinks that are coming from all these different trusted sources associated with your business that talk about your business that that talk in unique ways user generated unique content so can you tell he cares about this yes quick <laughs> <laughs> question about that uh, You're talking about the user-generated yes. reviews. Um, how do compensated reviews um, mm -hmm. fall into that? And what do you mean by compensated? Paying well, for the reviewer. Yeah, paid where you're, where you're paying for your reviews. Um, example, I bought something on Amazon. After I received the product, I got an email from the seller mm -hmm. saying, hey, we'll give you a $50 <laughs> gift certificate if you post a review. I think that's against Amazon's policies. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't do it because I was like, "This is this feels weird," so I didn't do it. Um, another another one. Most most user agreements for review websites say that you can't pay to, to get reviews. Yeah, and I would yeah. say in general, if you have to, I mean, if you have to do that, I mean, it's it's you should get reviews any way that you can. I would say, like, I, I'm I'm encouraging you to call your wife right now and get them to review your business or whatever you have to do. I think that you should get reviews, but at the same time, um, you know, that will not create genuine good service and, and loyal customers, right? Yeah, and it does violate the terms of those sites. Yeah. Like Google has rules against soliciting reviews, offering something in exchange for the review. They want it to just be an authentic one. Just having recently experienced it, I didn't know how how common that was with the with the reviews that we do see that as, you know, trying to look at this as a consumer rather than a business, mm -hmm that we rely on to say, hey, this place looks like they're yeah. okay. And like, I can totally see that. Like a lot of people, if they look at your reviews and they see your Google reviews are like five star rated and your Yelp reviews is like one star rated, that's a big discrepancy. And that adds to a level of distrust, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, you know, there's certainly pay to get reviews programs out there. Um, yeah. And there's they're certain all, risks. They're all pretty sketchy that. and they're all coming out of, you know, some call center in India, likely, you know, you're not getting authentic reviews. Um, sure. So let's get into new product service launch for SEO. Um, in introducing a new offering where SEO strategies are employed to maximize online visibility reach by optimizing product related content, utilizing keyword research specific to the product and leveraging backlinking opportunities. SEO ensures that your product garners attention, drives traffic and gains sales. So when you launch a new product, it is a brand new page and has no links to it, it's not going to do very well. And so you, you really need to plan that launch if you want to have a really successful product launch and you want to really push something, right? And so um, what we would encourage is to create a pre-launch uh, checklist. And th really this should be multi-channel, not just an SEO checklist, right? Um, but for example, teasing your new product launch, you could even do like a coming soon press release, for example, or coming soon posts on your social media or featuring it on your homepage as this service is coming soon, right? 
that allows all of these links to develop and exposure. It allows time for the page to start to develop and rank well, right? Yeah, to that point, it's just having that foresight. So you know you're gonna launch a product, but sometimes just throwing up a page is the only thing you get ready in time for the launch where that's just not gonna be enough for Google to consider it that important. Like it's just a page on your site that no one else is linking to, no one else is talking about. There's not even any other content on your site about it. Like how important it is it if it's just this one little thing. So being prepared to be cross channel, get other sites to talk about it, have press releases, get it reviewed and doing it with enough of a lead up that you're not scrambling at launch to do it. You already had planned ahead for that. Hmm. And some, um, do you, can you get him a microphone really quick? Mm -hmm. We'll get you in just a second. And then um, just some content marketing strategies. So video demo of your new product or service is super important. And we'll get your page just routinely crawled if you add it to YouTube and link back to your product page and then embed that YouTube video onto your product page to have a featured demo video. That link back and forth, Google crawls YouTube all day long and goes into your website then. Mm -hmm. um, so that's huge. Supporting content articles, oftentimes if you just do an introduction to this product or a guide to this new product or you know features and benefits of this new product, that goes a long way into kind of having additional content that is then linking to your product and boosting it up as well. Um, you can certainly do guest podcasts or guest posts or interviews about the product or service that you're launching. Third party uh, product reviews is another option to kind of have somebody else that reviews your product and then links to you, to you in order to boost that. Um, but let's get to your question, sir. Um, is there a certain content type that Google likes over another one? <laughs> um, they the content type that best fulfills the reason why the person is searching okay. is the is the best answer. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. That's the case. Yeah, you'll see advice like, "Oh, a page should be this many words. There should be a blog post. There should be an article." That's only true if that is the best way to answer their intent. Yeah, because there are sites that have very little content, but the kind of content that's there is exactly what is needed for this query, and so then those do well. So sometimes it's video. Sometimes it's blog posts, sometimes it's a PDF. It just depends like where is that answer gonna come from? Yeah, it's it's more like know, know your customer kind of, like if it's an academic uh, researcher, then you should do a white paper or something like that, right? Um, but um, in general, it's really just fulfilling and answering the problem. <coughs> Any questions on new products or service launches? Yep. Um, yeah. Let me give him this one real quick. We got one more up here. Sorry. So just curious about, um, like in my business, we launch new versions regularly. New right? versions? Uh, <clears throat> it'll be like a 2023 version of a okay. product, a 2024 mm -hmm. version of a product, right? And each of those go up as new pages. So we're losing any of that baked in SEO traffic over time. Sure. Because of, of just the natural churn of our products. Yeah. Um, so is that probably working against us in a way we're not yeah. recognizing? Yeah, like an example of that is a car dealer, right? right? So they get rid of their cars every, and they turn over. And so we lose, we lose rankings constantly and they go up and down based mm -hmm. upon that. There's certain ways to mitigate that. Uh -huh. um, you can certainly redirect the old one to the new one, but it sounds like you're keeping, are you keeping them? Sometimes they, sometimes they're up simultaneously. So I'm already thinking about ways we can. Yeah, I would. Too, I would but... take that old one, and when you do retire it, make sure to redirect it. Right. And you know, you want to adopt the content from the old page and put that on the new page to make sure that the value is passed to the new page when the redirect is, occurs. Right. And then similarly, just real quick, uh, is is there a way to really audit the backlinking whenever you're doing a. a maybe like a massive overhaul on a, a redesign, yep. can you find that backlinking traffic so you can prioritize the ones that you do want to set up the redirects for to keep to keep any of that S SEO yep. equity, right? Yeah. And so you can do backlink audits. SEMrush has one. H Hrefs has mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah, and if um, you're just trying to determine, like, is this page valuable to me or not, right. you can look at things like your Google Analytics data, your search console data that will tell you like, is this ranking for anything? How much traffic does it bring? Oftentimes the level of backlinks follows your rankings and traffic. So you can kind of see it that way as well. Sure. Okay. Thanks guys. 
All right. Um, this is just another example of something new, right? Integrating SEO into a whoop, grand opening. So, you know, a new store similar to a new product is brand brand new. Um, that can either be a dud as a grand opening or a grand opening. It can be your number one sale. There's the two top sales days for most businesses is the grand opening and the store closing. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, it works out that way. But there's ways to make it like really successful, right? And so you do want to tease that grand opening. You want to tell them that you're going to be opening this store, right? And you can do that in a variety of different ways that are beneficial for SEO. Um, certainly, we would want to make sure that um, there's uh, a photo shoot and quality yeah. photos. One of the things you're going to want to think about is like, what's the additional value I can extract out of this thing we're doing? Like, can this be an email blast and a social post and a blog post and a press release. And it, it can, if it can be those things, all of those have SEO impact too. So even if it's not like obvious, like, well, what does taking photos have to do with SEO? It gives you more material to use on all those other channels that have SEO value. So, you know, why is getting on the local news matter? Like Google doesn't watch local news. But the local news often means you're going to get like an article on their website and that could have a backlink. There's also such thing as an unlinked brand mention, which is like Google doesn't like to explain exactly how it works, but they are just looking for like, are people talking about you and are important people? And I say important in the sense of like the media or high authority sites, are they mentioning you? So these things that might not be like a direct technical SEO issue can still impact your SEO because it, it's how the whole world is talking about you. And that's what Google is ultimately trying to figure out is what are people talking about? Um, and I'll just give an example. So I used to work for a car dealership group and we opened a new uh, car dealership group. Um, that one was not a big grand opening. And so it took a while to gain traction for it. We did another uh, grand opening. And for that one, we teased it and we got a Four Seasons cover band to come play and had a huge event there. Um, we promoted the event. We distributed the business. Uh, I think the business listing distribution in particular for a new page, new location, just puts it on the map like crazy. As soon as we kind of did that, our website went straight to the top for our brand name search. It went and just skyrocketed in terms of um, its performance. And that that's because it, got those trust factors, right? It got those backlinks. It, it gained that initial traction in order to like come up on the map and be able to come up for its own brand name, right? And so um, you want to kind of prepare, right? And do a campaign for your most important events like this so that you can uh, kind of develop that content around this and promote it. And so um, with a grand opening, this is a great example of that type of situation. Um, and then what I would say is, you know, you should also be mentioning this like on your TV, radio, like it's best to do multi-channel advertising. It works better that way overall. Um, you know, at betting experts back to bed, they spent millions of dollars on TV, radio and everything. Right. Um, and I'll give you an example of that a little bit later on, but, um, man, uh, it really works. You, you, you'd really need that kind of holistic advertising program. And if you can do that effectively alongside SEO, right, that it all works just a, a, a lot better. And you end up having a grand, uh, grand opening sale that's, that's um, just um, your best sale there is. We are. <laughs> I know. We're so excited about those first slides. Yeah, I was just wondering, you mentioned about the non-linking naming yep. and how Google is kind of keeping that under wraps. Is there any way to tell when you have an acronym that's similar to other people's acronyms for a company <laughs> name, if that's hurting or how, helping you? Hurting or helping? Um, you can, I can't think of an immediate way. You could search it. for your brand name and see, uh, do you own the, the top of the searches? Do you own a lot, like multiple pages of the searches? Or are you sharing branded search with another person? We're sharing. Okay, so then what I'd say is you do need foundational uh, development, trust factors, and backlinking. 
Uh, yeah. Yext would be a good mm -hmm. good way to start, and then um, making sure to promote your Google business listing mm -hmm. after that, and then additional backlinking and social media work. Yeah, Google's building what they call entities. They're building little like records about things and businesses and what they are, what they're related to. Mm -hmm. And certain ones will get more priority if there's just more things on the internet. Like if you have a Wikipedia mention, for example, that's huge, right? Yeah. Versus um, yellow pages or whatever. Yeah, so it's trying to build out all these little like files about everybody and how they're related to each other and other concepts. And there's like, if there's just a bigger company that has more websites talking about it, Google's going to notice that. So you have to try to do things that will get you more mentions. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be available up here for a little while, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to Modern Marketing Messages. For more information about the topics discussed today, check out the description of this episode. If you like this episode, follow the podcast wherever you listen to them to stay up to date with us. While you're at it, give us a rating and share this podcast with others. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Modern Marketing Messages. This episode is brought to you by AmericanEagle.com Studios. I'm Taylor Karg, and I'll be back with another Modern Marketing Message.